Welcome to Education Today. My name is Chuck Garrett and I'm your host. Today I am fortunate to have with me Miss Patricia Neely Dorsey. Yes, thank Appreciate you. you being here. And she is the author of the book, Meet My Mississippi. I haven't had an opportunity but to become a little bit familiar with the book and it is really an outstanding history of Mississippi. Um, as a person who worked in schools all my life, we've seen Mississippi Studies courses and all this kind of thing, but I haven't seen anything that really tracks a history of Mississippi in the way that her book does. And so I really enjoyed uh, looking at it, and I think you'll, you'll enjoy hearing a lot about it. Thank you. So, Ms. Dorsey. Yes. Um, You've written a lot of books. I have written three books of poetry before this Meet My Mississippi book. Okay, mm -hmm. and I know you interview a lot of authors. I do, I do. How did how did it come, how did you come by the idea of interviewing officers for Hill Country Network and maybe other places? I don't know, but I know you do it for Hill Country mm -hmm. Network. Well, I was here talking about my book and my books of poetry, and I had an interview. And after that, um, I was asked if I would mind interviewing other Mississippi authors and I was like oh my goodness that is my passion on my Facebook page and things like that I thought ever since I've been on Facebook I wanted to introduce people to Mississippi talent our artists and authors and so it was just a, a flow into that well I've been really impressed by your enthusiasm and love for our state thank you and your desire to put forward a lot of information in, in a very informative way, but also a very positive way. Absolutely, absolutely. My slogan is celebrating the South and promoting a positive Mississippi. And that's what I've been doing. I tell people I've been doing that since I was in college. I went to school in Boston University. And as soon as I stepped off the plane, when I would say I was from Mississippi, people would ask the most ridiculous questions. You know, do you have the animals in the house? Do you have mud floors? Do you live in huts? And I'm like, really? No. And so we just started having conversations about Mississippi and every time people would see me it was all about Mississippi. So by the time, you know, by the first year or so half of my friends called me Tupelo and the other half called me Mississippi because every time they saw me coming that's what it was going to be about. <laughs> Talking about Mississippi. Well you said you went to Boston University. Yes. Mm -hmm. Alright, where did you grow up. Where Tupelo. Did you go to, okay. Tupelo you grew up in Tupelo. Mm -hmm. yes. Well, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's We fine, forgive right? you for growing up. <laughs> right, it's no, okay. I, I just, you know, there's always this rivalry in New Albany, mm -hmm. Tupelo. And of course, Tupelo's gotten the better of a lot of that rivalry, mm -hmm. but New Albany's on the road. Oh, it is. I love New Albany. Uh, New Albany is growing and it's doing and a lot of things. And I say that every things. time I come up the road, I say, wow, if I didn't live in Tupelo or grow up in Tupelo, I would think I would have loved to grow up in New Albany. I say that every time I come through here. Well, one of the things I enjoyed in, in your book was kind of your history. Well, first off, I didn't know we were the 20th state. Mm -hmm. I probably should have known that, <laughs> but I didn't. And so I enjoyed seeing that. But also, where the capital, at the time we became a state, where was the ta capital located? The capital was in Natchez, and almost everything about the sta state started in Natchez when it came out of being a territory. Uh, before that, it, everything was kind of centered in Natchez, before we were even a state, and then that was just the progression of it, that Natchez became the, um, because of Natchez on the hill, that it was on the river, and that's where all of the Natchez trace went down to Natchez, and all of the commerce and trade and everything about Mississippi uh, came through Natchez. Okay. So it was just a, a natural progression for it to be the capital when it became a state. And that was pretty early on, I mean, I, like mm -hmm. 1817? Yeah, 1817. So we became a state in 1817, mm -hmm. and the capital was in Natchez. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've been to Natchez, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It is. And even now it's got some of the old hotels and Very buildings. Very historic and city, and one of my pages in the book when it starts to talk about our 20th state, it just goes through a lot of things about Natchez, because the first post office in Mississippi was in Natchez, the first lumber mill was in Mississippi was in Natchez, the first of almost everything, because everything really about our state kind of sprouted out of Natchez. So in a way, and that it did have to do with the river and commerce absolutely, and people. And absolutely, and So, the, you know, if you come down the Mississippi River, a natural stop was Memphis. Absolutely. And then a natural stop, probably the next one mm -hmm. would become Natchez. Mm -hmm. Now, where did... You see, Natchez is even older than New Orleans. It's like the... Old, that's even in the book also, that it's like the oldest along the river. It's like the old, oldest settlement. 
Okay, I noticed you had information, and I have to say this, you being from Tupelo, about the birthplace. Oh, you already know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about Elvis. I mean, I am the biggest Elvis fan you could ever imagine. So, you know, I love saying that I'm from Tupelo, the birthplace of Elvis Presley, definitely. Okay, I'm and get that in there. And of course, Memphis has been trying to claim him for a long time. Of you know, course, Sun Records of course, but and, they can never uh, say he was born. In, nobody can never say that they were born. He was born anywhere other than Tupelo, Mississippi. I, w I want you to know, at one point, I lived about a mile from the mansion. Okay, okay. We lived uh, on Winchester uh -huh. in what was what in Whitehaven. Uh -huh, yes. And uh, it was I was matter of fact, one day I was walking by uh -huh. the mansion before I even knew. Okay. Somehow when you grow up in a town where somebody is, you don't think of you them in the same way you do if they it. live in That's California true. or something. I lived in Memphis for like 18 years, so I passed that every day going to the church that I attended and going to the library near the mansion and everything. So it was like commonplace when I see all these crowds and all this stuff. We were used to it because, you know, but people come from all over the world, you know, to, to Graceland. Well, I noticed in your book you featured Vicksburg a good bit, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and in particular maybe some of the memorials. Right, absolutely. Vicksburg Battlefield, uh, the, it's talking about the Memorial Park or whatever. It is the second largest in the United States after Arlington. And, and somehow people head to Shiloh, mm -hmm. yeah. which yeah. is in Tennessee, right. which, right. I mean, it would seem we might spend more time heading to Vicksburg. <laughs> Well, that's part of You know, it. I don't know. And uh, so the capital, we talked about the capital, 1817, we became a state, mm -hmm. and it moved. Mm -hmm. It moved, and we had three capital buildings in Jackson, Mississippi. So it, my book goes through all of that. And I love the fact that, you know, this book is a book that can go from all ages. You can start reading this book to, to your, you know, preschool and babies because they get excited about the colors and the pictures and... I have people telling me, oh, I read that to my kids, and they want to know, where have you been? Have you been to this place? And you started that early preschool mm -hmm. age loving this book, and it's a book to grow on. So uh, you could use it all the way through college college level. Did you do a lot of your own graphics, or oh, did no. you have somebody else? Because they are, the pictures really are very engaging. They and yes. they, I, I mean, honestly, and, and I think you said it, kids of all ages would enjoy looking at it, and so yes. would adults, because it is a wonderful narrative history account, mm -hmm. and it moves all across the state. It does, and, and I just wanted to read this one thing from an educator, a teacher, that said uh, something about this. A teacher, um, she said, as a teacher, it's hard to find nonfiction books that are usually uh, stimulating and that are high interest for elementary students, and this book is both, and I love that. Um, as for fourth grade, this book will not only help teach the English language standards, but it will also help teach the social studies curriculum fourth grade in the state of Mississippi. Are, and they are required um, to be taught Mississippi studies. This book is a great addition to teach all of the standards that are labeled in the curriculum. I love that. Well, and I don't know exactly how to say this, but from my point of view, with the graphics, the pictures, uh -huh, uh -huh. and then the specificity of the history, uh -huh. it makes it really interesting for any age. Absolutely. I, mean, I really Absolutely. enjoyed just Absolutely. looking at it myself because it's very enthralling just to see, right. really? I really? love you saying well, that. And when I looked at, for instance, you make reference to the Neshoba County uh -huh, Fair. Uh -huh. And I mean, I know it's been there for a while, but I had no idea it went back right, into the absolutely. 1800s. I mean, I don't know if you remember the date, mm -hmm. but it's 18 yes, something when right. that thing first got started. And uh, for that tradition to go on, mm -hmm. gosh, those many years and it's headed toward 200 better, years, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, is really um, amazing. And so, what I tell people is, my hope for the book is that you'll read and enjoy and look at the pictures, and the young children look at the pictures and everything. That's the way you should read it beforehand, reading it and looking at the poem and reading the poem, and then go back and look at all the notations in the book and the little things that are written on the signs. All, the, all of those are actual historic signs that you'll see when you go visit the places. I didn't make the words on the sign. Those are That's right. Mississippi That's landmark right. signs, That's right. and we wrote them just like they are on the signs. So instead of if you haven't been to the place you'll be able to see it just like it is you know when you go uh, to Eudora Welty's house there's a Mississippi land 
mark sign in front of her house and it reads exactly. We, we couldn't put all of the information on the sign, but everything that's on the sign is from the actual sign. Now, Eudora Welty's house. Where, where? Jackson, Mississippi. Jackson, Mississippi. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Jackson gets a good bit of... A not, lot. It doesn't dominate the book, but historically, Jackson has been a mm -hmm, historical mm -hmm, town mm -hmm, for Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it is. And there are a lot of notations about uh, Jackson, a lot of notations about Meridian, but it, and definitely the Delta, because we're known as the birth cradle of rock and roll and uh, birthplace of the blues. So a lot of Delta things are... Tell us a little bit book. about what you would cite or that you would um, want to make sure everybody understood about the Delta, about rock, about the history of music and that kind of thing. Um, that's included. That's included in the book. When they start reading the book and reading the poem, and that's one thing I want to go into, the, the poem really started out. The, the book came from me writing a poem, 2013. Okay. And it was a very short poem. Uh, it was called Meet My Mississippi because I wanted to, people would always ask me, I had all these different poems about Mississippi, but I wanted one poem that kind of put everything together in, you know, in one poem, and I never could get that. And then that poem came to me. So, do, do you know it? Can you recite it? Or I, do you I have usually it read it. But okay. let, so let me read. Are you in a position where you can read it? I am, and because I'm going to read how it came out in the beginning, so that okay. you'll see the the progression okay. because it's really interesting. This is how the poem came out from me, uh, just out of my heart. Okay, so it doesn't have a lot of educational stuff in it, and then I'll tell you how the educational stuff got into it. All right. The poem says, Meet My Mississippi, Faulkner's Sanctuary, Eudora Welty's home state, Elvis's birthplace, the bulk of the trace, sprawling beaches along the Gulf Coast shore, one blues man's crossroads, an inspiration for more, an abundance of history, tradition, and folklore, warm front porch welcomes with a wide open door. A ride down the mighty river on the American Queen and some of the most beautiful countryside that you've ever seen. She's music and melodies and the mockingbird songs by valor and arms and faith ever strong. She's magnolias blooming around Jackson's Capitol Dome and the sweet scent of honeysuckle that forever says home. She's my Mississippi. She's the hospitality state. Go Mississippi, your true state of grace. So that's how it came out of me, but it's more of an emotional poem, and there are just a few little facts in there, like by Valor in Arms, with the, which is our state motto, and if you put guns to people's heads, almost you can get half of the people in Mississippi to know that our state motto is by Valor in Arms. Arms. But I tell them, hey, if you read my book and learn my poem, you're going to know it. And also, go Mississippi. None of the kids know. We had to know it, but they don't know that that's our state song. So that's part of my poem. So if they learn the facts in the book and, and the poem, then um, they'll know those things. Okay, now we're going to the second step. Yes, ma'am. Okay, now this is where the book came in. Um, I was... Uh, Governor Phil Bryant proclaimed me as a goodwill ambassador, to the official goodwill ambassador of the state in 2015, and I was really thrilled about that. Um, and you just are. from my other uh, books, Reflections, Magnolia Memories, and Mississippi in Me, that came from just those books. So then, someone, one of my Facebook friends was like, Patricia, that poem, Meet My Mississippi, that needs to be our state poem. And I was like, hmm, okay, well, okay, if you say it, you know, I can go out there and try to promote it as that. So it, I, it would make a good one. I mean, do we have a state poem? We don't have a state there you poem. Go. Well, we might have one now. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Let me tell you the story about that. All so, right. 2016, it was in, uh, introduced into the legislature, and as it was, that short kind of version. The first of it, version we just had? Absolutely, that okay. first version. Got shot down, which half of the bills do. Thousands of bills go in, half of them, 75% don't make it out. So, of course, it didn't hurt my feelings. But, you know, that's just the way legislature is. When you start working with politics, oh, my mm -hmm. goodness. Okay, so it didn't make it out 2017, 2000, uh, 2016, 2017. It went back again. Everybody's like, Patricia, it's got to be the poem. It's got to be the poem. Uh-uh, you know, it'll get dead in committee. So, okay, fine. So I told people, I'm kind of weird with this legislative stuff. They, they tell me, oh, well, this needs to be in the poem. This needs to be in the poem. That's when it started growing into a, a monster. I said, hey, I can add that. I can add that. But even after I added things, it was always more and more and more. And I kept adding, but still, it, it never made it our committee. 2018, we tried it again. 
and it didn't make it out of committee. So my thing was, the very beginning of this poem, when I wanted it to be the state poem, was because I wanted it to be able to get to the children of Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it, to help them develop pride. Exactly. To help them develop love. Ex to, help, to help them to grow up. Exactly. Loving where they're living. Exactly. And, and I can tell that through it is, Probably your main goal is, is. is to be educational. Uh -huh. We want you to know about Mississippi. Uh -huh. And the other is, is to engender an appreciation, love and affection Absolutely. for where they live. Absolutely. And I want people to know more about Mississippi, learn more about Mississippi, and love more about Mississippi through and, this book. And that is a, that's a tremendous goal to have when mm -hmm. you're writing a book. Mm -hmm. It's also an unusual mm -hmm. goal. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the reasons that I like what you've done mm -hmm. is you. because it that is a little different it is and uh, and it's a passionate thing it's a hard thing I call it a work of heart and let me go back because I back to your poem go ahead let me go back to way before the poem let me go back to the illustrations because I don't want to skip over that because this book would be nothing without Brenda Ragsdale and that's her picture on the back of the book you all see her she is a self-taught Mississippi artist she lives in Guntown Mississippi I met her on Facebook through a mutual Facebook friend, I was trying to get Magnolia pictures or whatever, and so we got introduced, and after that, it was probably two years later before uh, I asked her again, I was like, Brenda, can you illustrate this book? She said, well, I've never done it and never done anything like that before, but hey, she knocked it out of the ballpark, her very first time doing uh, watercolor illustrations ever. The illustrations really are they, good. I wish we had a circumstance amazing. where we could show you a we, page or two. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure with our technology, we wouldn't do it right, justice. They could probably, but they're going to show some, they'll probably put up some pictures later on. But it, it is amazing. It, they really are good. She they're is well amazing. Done. Yes. And the book would be nothing without that. So. And did, I, did she happen to do the cover? Um, she drew the she drew the uh, Magnolia and then Liberations Publishing. That's another amazing uh, person, uh, Nicole Mangum at uh, Liberations Publishing. She made two Magnolias out of the one that Brenda uh, had had uh, drawn. That. She made it. She made that. <laughs> now, <is> that <laughs> let me see if I yes. can. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do you get a good picture of this, Miss Ashcraft? <laughs> Ms. Ashcraft yeah. is doing this video, <laughs> and I want to make you want to. Yes. It's a really nice cover, and it reflects uh, what we uh, our state flower. Yes, the magnolia. That's right. So. And it's so funny because, like I said, this book is for all ages. I was recently talking to a group at ICC. Uh, it's called the uh, Early Childhood Education Program, and they're from three to five years old. I read the poem to them, and then, I, like I do to every grade and all the ages, uh, I start asking them questions after I've read the poem and talked about the book. And I'm telling you, after it's over, I said, what's our state flower? And they're like, the magnolia. What's our state tree? What's our state insect? Half of them don't even know that and that's in the point people don't know that we have a state insect number one but it's the honeybee and I put that in the longer version of the poem and all those little facts now you're gonna see the last version of the poem is like throwing in the kitchen sink so I'm gonna get to that this is the textbook edition of uh, meet my Mississippi so now I'm gonna read the poem as it grew all and right. then the longest poem. All right. Meet my Mississippi. William Faulkner Sanctuary, Eudora Welty's home state. Elvis Presley's birthplace, the bulk of the Natchez Trace. Choctaw Nation, native land, rolling hills of the Chickasaw Band, sprawling beaches along the Gulf Coast shore. One blues man's crossroads and inspiration for more, like Albert, B.B., Booker, Howling Wolf, Little Milton, and Muddy Waters, who came to the fore. There's farm-raised catfish, Delta tamales, vardaman sweet potatoes, seafood galore, and warm front porch welcomes with a wide open door. Creative muse for Barks, Stetson, PV Viking, and Henson's famous green frog. And I always tell them Barks root beer was invented in Biloxi, Mississippi, and where the southern crosses the yellow dog. And that talks about two railroads. And we, all throughout the book, it talks about the importance of railroads in Mississippi's history. And we're in one town, New Albany, right. that has a whole lot of history that goes behind railroads. And mostly every city, uh, Amory and all the cities in Mississippi, Tupelo grew up around the railroad. And it about that within the book. 
uh, with the ruins of Windsor, Vicksburg, Battlefield, Emerald Mound, and Far Mounds to explore. You'll find an authentic dental carousel merry-go-round, the oldest one in the whole United States, uh, double. She's the place where Coca-Cola was bottled for the very first time, and Pine Sol invented to combat dirt and grime. See, most people don't know that Pine Sol was invented in Mississippi. Okay. She's a ride down the Mississippi, she's a ride down the mighty river on the American Queen and some of the most beautiful countryside that you've ever seen. She's music and melodies and the Mockingbird songs. Our state uh, bird is the Mockingbird by Valor in Arms and Faith Ever Strong. That's our motto by Valor in Arms. She's Magnolia's blooming around Jackson's Capitol Dome with the buzz of the honeybee and sweet scent of the honeysuckle that forever say home. Since December 10th, 1817, our 20th state. Go Mississippi, the hospitality state. Roll on Mississippi, your true state of grace. So this is the second point when I started adding in all that facts like our statehood date is December 10th, 1817 and we are the 20th state. So, and go Mississippi, which is our state song. Now, am I right when I'm assuming, because a lot of that sounded familiar, that you use the poem, the poem through the, the book. Uh, yeah, so yes. it, it goes from yes. pretty much the beginning of the book mm -hmm. through the end. Yes, the whole poem. And each, what, each picture goes with the line of the poem. Right, and, and what, what she's done is whatever part of the poem she's dealing with, that has the picture above it and some yes. of the graphics and this kind of thing. For instance, right now I'm looking to at Mississippi, the Magnolia State, explored 1540 by DeSoto colonized by the French, uh -huh. 1699, became a colony of British, 1763. It's a tremendous history, and it's also very in inviting and engaging to look at. When, and I don't, again, you're probably not gonna be able to see this, but I just want you to see the kind of what the graphics look like and how that's put together. And the way it flows from the beginning to the end. Right. You know, you mentioned Coca-Cola and uh, I didn't know until uh -huh. I got involved with you and your book that the first Coca-Cola was put was in done Boston, here yeah. in, uh, and I think it's Vicksburg. Vicksburg, yes, and there's a co there's a museum down there, Beating Heart Muse uh, Coca-Cola Museum. It used to be a, like a candy factory and. Uh, uh, in a soda shop as far as like a pharmacy and all that and coca-cola at that time had to be the only way you could buy it was like when you went to the old-time pharmacies and get it on tap you know like a soda uh, yeah, drink yeah so that and this man he was just like hmm if we put it in bottles you can ship it anywhere it can go anywhere they don't have to just come in here we could buy it and sell it in droves and that's how it, it and if you look on the coca-cola website you'll see you know and when I was, I remember growing up, we'd get the little coats, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know, yeah. and we'd look on the bottom of them and it would tell, I guess, the town that it had listed there was uh -huh. where it was bottled uh -huh, at that point. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And all that came out of Vicksburg. Vicksburg, Mississippi. Absolutely. <laughs> and all of that is in the book and it's like, you just say, wow. I mean, it's just things that they don't know. 1894, Joseph Beating Harm, first bottle Coca-Cola in Vicksburg, Mississippi. And that goes along with the line of the poem that says she's the place where Coca-Cola was bottled for the very first time. And Pine Sol invented to combat dirt and grime. And if you go to the Pine Sol website, it, it tells the whole history. You click on history and it talks about this man, chemist H.A. Cole, a native of Jackson, Mississippi, developed Pine Sol in 1929. And it talks about he was living down there amongst the whole a lot of pine trees and he thought hey you know as you were looking at that I got a is that poetry the first version or the second or the third this this one in the book well the yeah. second version okay uh -huh. so it's the version that basically the legislature wanted you to enhance a little bit Mm -hmm. And then they didn't bring it out anyway. Right, exactly. Are, are you still working on them? No, I'm through with that because I would not have had this. But I, I mean, I always say, unfortunately, it didn't become the state poem. But that wasn't the plan. It's just like, oh my goodness, it was. I say God had a bigger plan for it because I would have never thought of the children's book at all. If it had become the state poem, I would never have thought of doing a children's book. My um, thought process started, the, the little wheels started turning when I said, oh my goodness, I want this to be in the schools. I want, because if it was a state poem, they would have to really learn the, the thing like they would learn something else like right. the state. 
so I said, what is a way that it can get into the schools? And I was like, okay, make it a children's book. You know, even if it's not in the schools, it's going to get in the homes. And I really think the book should be in every home in the state of Mississippi. Well, see, that, see, that's what I was going to say. Uh, and I know we're about out of mm -hmm. time, but I still okay. want to do this. Um, the first time I heard it called a children's book. Mm -hmm. Right kind of made me feel like, well, that's not for me. Right. And so only having gone through it some, did I realize it's a coffee table book. It is. I mean, this it is. is one of the type books where you put it there and you let people who come right. by your house right. or come and visit right. and they start flipping right. through it and they realize what all's in it. Share Mississippi love across generations with the right. Meet My Mississippi Children's Book. Well, uh, we're about out of time. Yes. Is there anything you'd like to say to the audience before I sign us off here? Oh, I just want to say that this book is great for all ages, and I want people to know that our children need to have a love for Mississippi, and I want them to be able to, to have that to equip them uh, with information. So when people start talking about all the negatives, they have something to combat that with. Well, it's, it's beautifully done, and it's very informative. Thank you. And, uh, I'm proud we have the book in our state. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me just for the time to, to be able to let people know that there is something out there to promote our state and that we can share with our children across generations. Well, thank you for being here. And uh, for Patricia Neely Dorsey and Hill Country Network, this is Chuck Garrett saying we'll see you next time.